Thanks for checking out this movie review video, and this is for the 2019 theatrical release Godzilla King of the Monsters. Now, I was pretty excited going into this one. Uh, I ended up wanting to see it in the theater, but I ran out of time. I just got busy with things, didn't see it, because I thought there's a film that you should see cinematically in a theater. Um, just didn't happen, so... Uh, you know, what are you going to do? So I watch it on HBO, and when I'm posting this, it's on HBO, so go watch it if you have HBO, eh, if you want to, <laughs> if you're interested in it. I'm going to say up front, usually with newer films like this, I don't do spoilers, but for this one, I'm going to do spoilers, because it kind of doesn't matter for a film like this. Uh, a lot of people have kind of talked about it. They tried to make this Godzilla movie a lot like the older Godzilla movies, where it's kind of... Um, focus more on just the monsters being monsters and the actual like story isn't that big of a deal. The human portion isn't that important and isn't very good, uh, which, you know, I'll, I'll get into that more, but so there will be spoilers. So if you really want to watch this spoiler free, stop right now, go watch the movie, then come back to it. Uh, the other thing is disclaimer. If you're a huge fan of this film, <laughs> you might not want to watch the rest of this because I greatly disliked it uh for many many reasons that i will go into i will touch on the stuff that i thought was good about the film so i'm going to be as fair as possible but overall i thought this was crap so you know anyway these are sometimes these end up being like my favorite types of reviews because when i just rail against a film it's kind of fun i don't know I like watching good stuff too, though. So, okay. So I really wanted to like this film, I will say. I really, really did because the person who directed it is Michael Dougherty. And Michael Dougherty's done some of my favorite stuff. One of my favorite all-time films, Trick or Treat. Love, love, love that film. So amazing. And he is going to be doing a Trick or Treat too. He had said that once he was done with uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters, he was going to start work on Trick or Treat too. So hopefully that actually happens. We'll see. Uh, he also did Krampus, which is one of my favorite, ho or, sorry, Halloween, Christmas movies. One of my favorite Christmas movies. It's really well done. There are some people who don't like it as much, but it, I feel like it's a good mix of like horror, drama, and comedy. So, really good stuff. Uh, written by this film, uh, Dougherty himself, also Max Borenstein, who worked on the 2014 Godzilla, which is where this whole series started. The Kong and Kong Skull Island, which was the second installment of these. And there will be a fourth installment, people, of Godzilla vs. Kong, which I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna find out who worked on it. Because depending on who works on it, I might see it because I didn't see the 2014 Godzilla. I did see Kong Skull Island and I liked it. I thought that one was good. And then I obviously did not like Godzilla King of the Monsters. So who knows what we're gonna get with Godzilla vs. Kong. I Kong, I've heard that Gareth Edwards, who directed the 2014 one, is supposed to come back uh, to direct the newer one, so I don't know, we'll see. Also, one of the writers for this was Zach Shields, who worked with Michael Dougherty on Krampus, so some people who know how to write some scripts. This is the 35th overall Godzilla film. It's insane to say that. That is a lot of material generated off of this one creature, so it's just... It's crazy. It's totally crazy to consider. And I will say, I haven't seen a ton of the Godzilla films. Uh, I've seen one or two straight-up Godzilla films, and I saw the original Mothra, which I really like the original Mothra. That's fun. Uh, I also saw the Rift Tracks live version of Mothra, which is also a good time because Rift Tracks is amazing. So if you're into that, see that. So this film had a... I don't know why it's a 100 to 200 million dollar budget. I don't know why the range was so large in what I found. And it made 385.9 million dollars at the box office. So profitable. They made money. That was the whole point. So I, I assume that's why they went ahead and said, yes, we will do Godzilla versus Kong. So going to make some money. Sorry if you hear my cat yelling in the background. She's much like Godzilla. Very moody. Uh, <laughs> Film, the, they actually dedicated this film to the executive producer Yoshimitsu Bano and the original suit performer Haruo Nakajima, who both died in 2017, which is sad. And um, Nakajima, from what I understand, he had to deal with a lot of crap when he was in the Godzilla suit originally because the initial suit I had heard on NPR was made out of cement. Uh, so, yeah. 
that would have been really horrible. So they said that basically it was super heavy to move in and you got super, super sweaty. So you could get dehydrated easily. So, wow, uh, Nakajima, I mean, much respect to that guy for going through all that. Because he did a few films in that suit. Uh, designs of creatures were used to make modern versions and new monsters were also introduced as Dougherty believed this as a Toho tradition. He kind of believed the old Toho Godzilla films, they always would introduce like a new creature. So he's like, so we got to introduce some new creatures. Now, granted, you don't see a whole lot of the new creatures. You see enough of them to be like, okay, this is what they look like. And I think it's like three new ones mainly. Um, and they look good. That's the thing. Like the creatures look really good. It's just, they didn't really utilize the new ones. They just want to go with the older ones, which you know, makes sense because that's what kind of brings the fans in. They're like, oh, I know Ghidra, I know Rodan, I know Mothra, and obviously everyone knows Godzilla, so that's what sells. But I thought it was cool that they kind of took, like, the older versions and they kind of decided to modernize them, make them look better. And from what I hear, Michael Dougherty's idea was to make them look kind of godlike to a point where, like, people could believe that they were worshipped as gods a long time ago which i think they achieved that i really really do i mean when you see them in in the film the the scale of them how realistic they look how they move the noises they make i think they they did things very very well with the visuals in this film and the directing's really good i mean it looks great it looks great there's just the script and some other things but i'll talk about that more the film was almost cut into two films to be released because the original cut of it was three hours. The end ended up being a little bit over two hours, and to be honest, I don't know where they would have done three hours in this because, bleh, just bleh. It's boring. It's boring. It's boring. I, I'm just telling you that up front. So, knowing what a Godzilla movie is, when I started watching this, I already kind of didn't was like, let's not uh, touch too much on what's going on with the humans. I'm here for giant kaiju. Well, they're called titans in this film, but I know them as kaiju from back in the day. I'm here for giant kaiju throwing down, throwing elbows at each other, throwing fists, biting each other, destroying each other. That's what I'm here for. I want to see the fights. Because with a title like Godzilla King of the Monsters, it gives you the idea that they're going to come together and they're just going to fight a bunch of them. And that's the idea that the trailer gives you as well. Not so much in the film, though. There are some fights, but you barely see any of the fights. And when you're seeing the fights, you're seeing it from the perspective of the humans, from the human POV shots. Why? There are shots here and there where you see it from like a, a longer shot and then it'll kind of zoom in and show you like when they're running at each other and stuff like that. That's good. We should have had a lot more of that. They keep cutting to these shots of like seeing them from the ground or seeing them from like a helicopter or an airplane or something like that. Like literally from the point of view of the humans, which is stupid because it limits how much of the actual I'm going to keep saying kaiju, how, how much of the actual kaiju fighting you end up seeing. And that's the film. That should have been the film. That's what the film is supposed to be about, is the kaiju and the kaiju fighting. Why are you showing so much human crap? And the other thing is, while the fighting is going on, literally, while a lot of the fighting is going on, they just cut over to humans talking, trying to solve their problems. Who cares? Who cares? The dialogue sucks. It is horribly, horribly, horribly written. Go back to the fighting monsters. That's what everyone's here for. That was what was promised in the trailer. It's what's promised in the title of the film. And you're delivering barely any of it. Unbelievable. This is trash. Trash. It's just... I gotta calm myself down a little bit. Because at some point I'm gonna say something nice again. I think. But... It's just garbage, man. So so going into it, I was just like, let's minimize how much of the human stuff there is. And no, it, they totally went the opposite direction. They put so much of the human story in, and there's not a whole lot to the actual human story there. They just keep kind of rehashing the same crap, where it's just like, oh, now these people want to use 
the Titans to their advantage. Oh, now these people want to stop them from using the Titans. Okay, let's go figure out a way to wake this Titan up. Let's go figure out a way to get this Titan to fight this Titan. And they just keep rehashing the same crap. And it's just like, okay, well then let's get to the point of them fighting. Like have them fight. Let's get to the point. But it just focuses so much on the garbage happening with the humans with trash dialogue, trash dialogue, the, the writing in this is just atrociously bad, in my opinion. Just garbage. And what makes it worse is they had good actors in this and wasted. Millie Bobby Brown, very good. Ken Watanabe, really good. Uh, Vera Farmiga, really good. And, and they, they did the best they could with what they were given, but they were given garbage. They were given crap. There was nothing there. Um, so, so then I started, I was watching it, and I'm like, why would a kid be there when a giant creature is being born? Like, in the beginning, when Millie Bobby Brown's character, I forget what her character is even named, uh, when she was Morgan, I think, actually, when she was there, when um, the uh, coming out of the, Mothra was coming out of the egg as a, as a caterpillar, um, I was like, why is this kid there? That makes no sense. And I'm like, worst parent ever and the whole worst parent ever thing just keeps going in this film because the kid is with the mom the whole time she you know you obviously learn that she's in on this whole plan of like balancing the scales of the earth by having a bunch of people killed by these titans and she, like she knowingly gets her daughter in this situation it's ridiculous it's like first of all i don't think she would do that if she actually cares about the child and then in the end she has some sort of like awakening of like Oh no, wait a second. I do care about my child. I need to rethink this and fix the problem. Well, it's a good thing she dies in the end. Wait, does she die in the end? I lost interest. I hope she died in the end. No, I think she I think that she didn't, but she should have. Ken Watanabe dies in it, and that sucks because he was cool. Uh, the other thing is Mothra dies in this, the best of the kaiju in this film. Mothra was really cool. Not only the design of Mothra, but the character. They actually made a character out of Mothra, like, kind of as, like, this fighter for human justice. Godzilla kind of is, but they also are just like, Godzilla's on our side for now. Literally just being like, maybe we just made things worse by, like, making him even more radioactive and making him the king of everything. Which, I mean, I guess they kind of resolved that in the very end during the credits, where it kind of, you know, le leads you to believe that Godzilla becomes the king of all the monsters, and then he's just like, okay, everyone, go back to bed. <laughs> Literally, it's like, just go, to, just go back to bed. Nothing to see here. Ghidra's dead. I'm the new king. Everyone sleeps. Stupid. Uh, the dialogue's crappy. I already talked about that. The dialogue is straight trash. Uh, there were a few attempts at humor, but they just came off as as stupid. It's all shoehorned into situations where people would not be joking. Now, it's okay if you want to have, like, one or two characters in the film who are those types of people who just make jokes at inappropriate times because that's how they deal with being in tough situations. That's fine. But they tried to make, like, every character pretty much have a humorous moment where it's not a humorous moment in the film, and it just doesn't work. And it doesn't work from the standpoint of it's not realistic, it's ridiculous, but it also doesn't work from the standpoint of the jokes aren't funny. There was like one or two jokes that actually kind of landed, but for the most part, they put a lot of jokes out there and they were not funny. And it's just like, okay, a lot of eye rolling from me. Um, there's a quote that I wrote down in here that made me roll my eyes so freaking hard. It's almost like people were scared to write about it. Oh my god. This is when they were talking about, um, you know, the origins of, like, Ghidorah, or, or as they were calling it initially, like, Monster Zero or whatever, Titan Zero. Terrible. For how light the human portion of the actual story is, they sure spend way too much time on it. Yes, they, they took the opposite approach, and they're just like, Godzilla, King of Monsters, this should primarily be about the humans. No. No, it shouldn't. Because that's not how you entertain because let's be honest the story was light they had to know that the story on this was light yet they decided to just focus mainly on the humans dumb it, it, to be honest like watching this and and being so unhappy with the way it was executed i just i was very much like i would be much happier if in the end the titans just destroy the whole planet and we're done with it 
just we're done with it <laughs> let's be done although i wanted mothra to live godzilla isn't even that great of a of a character anyway like he just seems very neutral mothra is the coolest because mothra actually kind of seems like a hero and of course you got killed off mothra Ugh. so the titan co cop the titan audio copying technology that they had in here i think is stupidity it's dumb uh how is this created with just information from a titan or two do they all speak the same language? They seem to be different species. I know they're all titans, but they're not the same species. Like, one's a bird thing. One's a lizard thing. One looks like a friggin' octopus crab thing. Uh, you have one that's a gigantic moth. I don't get it. I bet they don't all speak the same language, I wrote. And also, they treat it like it's basically mind control for the creatures. So they break it down and they say that, like, oh... This is like we can speak their language with this. This is how they communicate with each other. But they don't treat it as communication. They treat it as, oh, if we play this, then it's mind control. They don't have any free will. It doesn't work. There's so many plot holes in this trash that they put out as a script. It's stupid. It's idiocy. It's idiocy. It doesn't work. Can you tell that I hated this movie? Uh, why are we focusing so much on the humans when the Titans are actively fighting? Everyone is here for the fights. This is what I was talking about earlier, where they're like, literally, there's a fight going on. And you're like, yes, yes, they're fighting. And then they just cut right to some people in like uh, a ship or a plane or on the ground. And they're talking to each other with terrible, terrible dialogue. And you're just like... <laughs> Move the camera this way. Move the camera this way. There's literally fighting going on right now. We should be watching that. I don't need to know what dumb crap these people are saying to each other, trying to make jokes that don't even land. So bad. Uh, it's funny when they have these moments of focusing on a few people in the crowd of chaos, and they end up totally fine. Especially because in the background, you're just like, oh, just like literally thousands of people just died. But you're supposed to feel good because like a mom and her kid made it for now although the entire city is destroyed so how are they going to live after the fact and you also don't know because the creature keeps going you don't know if they actually lived they just lived for that moment that you're seeing on film think outside of that it's mass destruction and death why are you supposed to feel good about this one little situation it's like oh well thank goodness that that specific woman and her specific child made it f everyone else <laughs> just whoo and that happens a lot in movies. That, that isn't just this movie. That happens a lot in movies. Uh, when Mothra shows up, it's ridiculous that Mark is standing there. That The main science guy, Mark. Uh, the amount of wind from the wings of Mothra would have swept him away easily because it's coming in and it's just like gale force winds pretty much and he's just easily just standing there looking at Mothra and, I mean... His shirt's getting blown a little bit, basically, but he would have been blown away, probably would have died. So, I see physics isn't a thing here. What do the humans think they're going to do with these tiny planes and boats against the Titans? That's the other thing. I guess it's a, a an issue of, like, I guess we have to try something. I guess we don't, but we need to go down swinging or something. But literally, like, these creatures are unbelievably large, and these have, like, these, in comparison, these, these little baby planes. being just, like, meh. You know, it, it's it's hopeless, which I guess is why in the end, the monarch folks are like, we got to get Godzilla to fight for us. But meanwhile, you have a bunch of people like, we're going to shoot them with pea shooters in comparison to the size of their body and do nothing. So what are you going to do? Why did they continue the mission underwater to heal Godzilla with nukes when they knew before they got there that it was damaged and they couldn't shoot the nukes? Like that. <laughs> That just played to me like, why didn't somebody say something earlier? Like, you get to the point of like, okay, and now's when we deploy the nukes to heal Godzilla and wake him up and he'll come and be our savior. And then the person who's in charge of it was just like, oh, yeah, no, that's damage. We can't use that. You should have said something earlier. Unbelievable. I don't think Godzilla will want to help <laughs> when you just destroyed his house. That's another plot hole with this. Why is it that, that all of a sudden, like, Godzilla is the savior of humanity? Because he just destroys, like, he destroys cities. You see him doing it. Like, he destroys cities, and he's fighting these other creatures, but they're like, oh, he's going to help humanity. 
but why would he then help humanity after, yes, they healed him with the nukes, but they literally blew up his house. Like, he's lived there for how long? I mean, when they're going through and they're seeing all the relics from it, they're giving you the idea that it's been there for a long, 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 long time. And literally, that's where he sleep. They blew up his bed. They blew up his entire house. Why would he be like, oh, thank you? Like, they said that he was recharging himself and he was healing himself. He would have been fine on his own timeline. But they said it's not convenient for the humans because it could take years. It could take tens of years, hundreds of years. We don't know. And in the meantime, maybe Ghidra is going to destroy everything. Yeah, but in the meantime, maybe Godzilla is going to destroy it too. Plus, did Ghidra even do that much before Godzilla killed him? I don't think so. It wasn't even that much that was done. I mean, I guess the issue was that Ghidra was waking up all the other ones and they were starting to like wreak havoc. I guess that's what it is. So I know I know if I didn't say that, someone's going to hammer me in the comments on it, which, you know, that's fair. I, I do want people to comment down here who, who like the film because I do want to hear why because I'm totally open to that. I just particularly hated it. That's just my thing. Um, the city is being destroyed, but somehow the road is clear. That's another thing. A lot of things become obvious about convenient script writing. And, and one of the big things is they're trying to do their getaway when the city is being destroyed, Boston. And they're, <laughs> and they're just like, there's just destruction everywhere. But somehow there's like a very clear path on the road for them to drive through. And it's like, oh, okay. And then also the fact that repeatedly when things are blowing up and buildings are falling down and all that type of stuff, everyone just happens to be right outside of the impact area. Just right outside of it. Enough that it's like, oh no, maybe they're in danger, but they don't actually get hurt. And it happens repeatedly. It's fine for that to happen like once or something, but it's just like happening and happening and happening and happening. And you're just like, okay, at some point it's like you're not even concerned for the person anymore because it's a pattern and you're just like they're just going to be like right outside of the impact zone whatever it, it makes the film lose its luster is my point there's a whole lot of uh now i already talked about that and why did they kill mothra best character god i know i already said that but i just why did they kill mothra you can fix the electronic device in the rain i wrote down yeah they're um they're titan uh, playback, their Titan, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Replicating voice device that they had in this like briefcase. They're fixing it in the rain. It's an electronic device. It has wires and everything. Like you can fix that in the rain. I probably not, probably not. And I said, what a weak finish to Ghidorah. And it's weak because Godzilla didn't even need to touch him to kill him in the end. That's what sucks about it. You barely got to see any actual, like, physical combat between Godzilla and Ghidorah. They fought a little bit, but in the end, like, I want him to finish off by, like, ripping his jugular out. Well, multiple jugulars out. Or, like, pulling out his heart. Or, like, slamming him down and just, like, pummeling him. Or ripping him to shreds with his claws or something. The fact that he just, like, does this, like, nuclear pulse blast thing... It just feels so anticlimactic and stupid. It's like he didn't even need to like physically fight him at all in the first place. He could have just... Just... There are a lot of terrible choices made in this. Just terrible. Like the choreography of the fights is, it, are dumb. I mean, first of all, you have the issue of not enough of the fights in it. Then you have the issue of the choreography of them are not interesting. It's, it's very bland. It's very blah. And you're barely even showing it anyway. So if you're barely showing it, you need the fight choreography to be really good when you are showing it. I'll tell you a, a film that did better. I, I wasn't a big fan of the film, but um, Pacific Rim. I mean, the way they showed the fight scenes and how they choreographed the fights, way better than this film. Way better. Just saying. Uh, so how do, you, how do they know making Godzilla the Alpha Titan was a good thing? That's the big thing at the end. And I think they kind of hint to that because they're like, he's a good thing he's on our side. And they're like, for now. So they really could have just made things worse. But then again, like I was saying, like, I get it. Ghidorah was, was waking up all the other Titans. And so they were wreaking havoc. So they were kind of like, well, this is what we need to deal with right now. So let's just get this taken care of. And then we'll worry about things later. But you have the other issue of like, 
Godzilla is like way more radioactive now than he was before. And that's another thing. These people were very, very close to him. So they uh, should be dying like not long after the events of the movie because they were all heavily, heavily exposed to radiation. Especially when like Godzilla had just been uh, ir irradiated by the nukes and he pops out of the water and then gets almost face to face with these people when they're on top of the boat. I think it was a submarine. And you're just like, okay, they're going to die. So that was it for like the, the events. But then they had the credits and they were playing the, the Godzilla song. And I wrote down, what is this bastardized version of Blue Oyster Cult's Godzilla? Which is a fun, it's a, it's a fun song. Not the bastardized version at the end of this film, but the original by Blue Oyster Cult is a good, is a fun, good song. And they should have just put that for the end credits. So then I was <laughs> even more disheartened when I looked to find out who did this remake of it. And it was someone named Bear McCreary who was involved in like sound and audio, uh, music and audio for the, for the film and Serge Tonkian, which that hurts my heart because uh, I loved the band system of down that he was the front man for, for quite some time. And then he killed the band because he wanted to go do more creative things that he wanted to do. And then he kind of didn't do all that much. Um, and then he just destroys this blue oyster, blue oyster cult classic. So it's like, ugh. Uh, and then the end credit scene when they find like the head from Ghidorah. I assume what's going to happen there is they're they're going to like try to clone it, a la Jurassic Park or something like that. But what the end credit sh scene should have been is finding a Mothra egg. That's what it should have been. That would have been fun because then you could bring Mothra back because Mothra was actually a cool character and it could be like your new buddy, um, like sidekick to Godzilla when you need Godzilla again. Although would Kong be, is Kong going to be bad too? I don't even remember. Was Kong, Kong was bad in Skull Island or maybe neutral. I don't know. We'll see. The Titans look great in this. I do have to say, like, like I said, visually it looks really good. The design of the Titans is really, really awesome. Which is part of the reason that it's so sucky that there's not more to the actual fights. I want to see more of the Titans fighting. So there's a theme of human struggle to control nature in this and the ensuing catastrophe when that fails. Which is no big surprise because it kind of ties back to the origination of Godzilla. Which had to do with a lot of anxiety having to do with nuclear weapons. And that's kind of something where humans created it and then it can easily get out of hand and out of control and then it was a mistake to mess with it in the first place and there's some of that at play here so i get that i wrote the nuclear fear theme is still echoed from the original films what happens when nuclear capability gets out of control it doesn't take much for people to lose control of it and there's no margin of error and that kind of plays in this uh, i do like the aim of the titans coming to be the limiting factor for out of control humanity i did like that theory that was thrown out relatively early in the film that um humans are kind of a plague on the earth and these creatures are waking up so that they can come and cull out the herd a little bit and then kind of leave things back in a balance i think that's a cool concept and they should have played a little more to that because they actually abandoned that later on and they're just like oh no they just want to destroy stuff but you know anyway and then there's going to be the godzilla versus kong so we'll see but all right, so sorry this has been a long review, but it was a long movie. It was over two hours. So i uh, got to give my star rating on this. So out of five stars with half stars in play, I mean, visually it looks really good. I know there's some people who really liked it. There are a few things okay with it. I'm going to go at one and a half stars. I'm thinking, I was thinking about giving it two stars. But I think one and a half is more appropriate because the dialogue is terrible. The it, It's unforgivable that they focus so much on the humans when there's actual fighting going on. It's just they made a lot of mistakes with this film. A lot of mistakes. Because if it's not about the creatures and the fights, what is it about? <laughs> Honestly, I would say to people, if they were just mainly interested in the creatures themselves, I would say just do this. Look up the pictures of what the creatures look like through Google Images and just make up in your own mind what the fight should have been like. And that's basically the best thing you can do. Don't even watch the movie. 
waste of time. Anyway, hated the film. Sorry, but you can defend it. Put some comments down there. Let me know your thoughts, especially if you liked it, because I would be interested in seeing another side of things. I'm always open to that. So please put a comment down there, but do me a big favor. Hit that subscribe. If you like any of the videos I do, any of them, please repay me by hitting that subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks for checking this out, though. Give me a thumbs up if you want to. Until next time, keep it brutal.